Everybody can read it, but you have to study. The Bible said study to show yourself the truth. You know, sometimes you can study without reading the Bible. Did you ever sit and study in your mind to sit and think on something? The Lord revealed a lot of things to us sometimes. Just sitting and waiting upon Him. I mean, we can find all kinds of definitions and stuff. But I like the definitions that we get out of the Bible. I know they're right. But our lesson tonight will help the Lord bring us home. Went off. Went off. Something in his voice calmed down. Did I go off? I was off. Yeah. I didn't know what you were talking about, Brad. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a little, I am a little bit off. I'm really having trouble with my hearing. Amen. <coughs> but the fruit of the Spirit. How many spirits is there? Just one spirit. Isn't there? There's only one faith, one baptism. God's got one spirit, but there's something that makes up that spirit, that takes part of that spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, Proverbs 11 30, he said, The fruit of righteousness is a tree of life, and he that went a soul is wise. I want to be in that tree of life, don't you? Amen. 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 I want to have some fruit. Isaiah 11 and 2, he said, In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped Israel. And you'd say, well, how could somebody escape Israel? Well, just because people was Israelites, that didn't make them God's people. You know, there was two Israels, just like there's two churches today. You know, really, some churches we need to escape from. If they're not preaching the truth and they ain't living right, we need to escape from them. He said, he said the fruit would be excellent. I want to have excellent fruit, but we've got to escape the worldly Thing, that's what he was talking about the world of Israel. John chapter 5, or 15, I'm sorry, verse 5. Jesus said, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth what? Much fruit. Much fruit. <laughs> For without me, you can do nothing. The only way you're going to have fruit is you're going to have to stay in the vine. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go and what? Bring forth, bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should what? Remain. Remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he shall give you. Now the fruit's not going to be no good if it don't last. You know, you gotta, you got to have fruit that lasts. And you know what I'm talking about? Making it last, it means it bears every season. In other words, you can have a nice apple tree in your yard, and, and, that, uh, and that, but if you don't take care of it, then next, the next year it don't take it, don't bring forth no fruit. Or if the fruit comes, I remember when uh, I was a little boy, we lived up here on 650 where Angie lives now. And uh, there was a pawpaw tree up on there on the back hill. My dad said that thing used to be hanging full of pawpaw. But I know when I was a kid, they might have been one or two on there. That's all that was ever on there. But nobody had ever trimmed it. Nobody really ever took care of it. It sat back on the hill. And that's the way our Christian life is. If we don't take care of the thing of our lives and take care of what God wants us to do, <coughs> we're not going to be bringing forth no fruit. Right. In one place, he said, every branch in me, he said, if it brings forth fruit, he said, I'm going to purge it, that it'll bring forth poor fruit. We can't bring forth enough fruit. Because the more fruit we can bring forth, the more other people can eat off from it, the more that other people can grow on it, and you supply other people's needs as yourself. But in Luke chapter 6, verse 43, he said, For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit. That's not what my words, that's what the book says. Neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his what? Fruit. His fruit. <laughs> For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of the bramble bush gather they grapes. 
In other words, you go out here on the vine, the grapes grows on the vine. It don't grow on a thunder thorn bush. You're not, you, if you're looking in the right place, you're going to get the right fruit. All right? Ephesians 5 and 4, or I'm sorry, 5 and 9, he said, For the fruit of the Spirit is in, I am, all goodness and righteousness and truth. That's where the fruit of the Spirit is. 2 Timothy 2 and 6, he said, The husbandman that laboreth must first be a partaker of the fruits. In other words, these fruits that we're talking about, things we're reading about, the husband of labor, he's supposed to have fruit in his life. If I never eat, if I didn't have no fruit in my life, how could I be a salesman? If I didn't have, I couldn't be an apple salesman if I didn't have no apples, if I didn't have no fruit trees. A lot of people don't have what they say they have, but they're still out there being a husband. I'm not talking about like a man marrying a woman. I'm talking about somebody that takes care of the vineyard, somebody that takes care of the, the work of God. James 3 and 17 said about the wisdom. I want you to listen to this. There's a lot of wisdom in the world, but listen to this one. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easily to be entreated, full of mercy and of good fruits, and without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in what? Peace. Peace of them that make peace. Everything's got a channel, a way to go. Galatians, this is going to be our text we're going out of tonight. Galatians 5 and 22. He said, for the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, Goodness and faith, meekness, a temperance against such there's no law. In other words, if we got all them things there, we're going to be perfect. We, we got all them, have all that fruit growing on a tree, then we'd be perfect before God. And you know what? All this, this fruit gathered together, what do you think it stands for? How about charity? I know we talk about charity today. Most of your dictionary stuff when they talk about charity, they talk about love. But it's more than just love. Love is the bond of perfectness. It's perfect love. He said when a man laid down his life for his friends, that's perfect love. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Everybody's reading here. <laughs> stay with me tonight. Let's stay together. I've talked about this here a few nights ago. How many knows what a facet is? Anybody know what a facet is? The face of a diamond. Right. You see this diamond here? Yeah. See all them little flat spots? That's a facet. Everybody see that? And you know what? The light can shine on this and it'll go in all directions. Just like the light that goes off these here, but go, I guess that we could call that a facet up there on the chandelier. The sides, every one of them, they reflect a different way. The fruit of the Spirit, that's it's like these things that we're talking about, they're like the facets of the Spirit. These things are in us. God <coughs> wants them to be in us and work. But I've just got a few scriptures here, and uh, maybe not keep you real long tonight. But uh, I'm not saying that this facet's only got nine. This this diamond here, I don't know how many facets it's on, but I'm just talking about the pure <coughs> time, the pure thing of God. I'm talking about the nine facets. I'm just using that as a, a something for us to think about. Every way you look at God, it's different. You remember in the Bible when he said he, he had the face of a man and the face of an ox and the face of a cat. He had all these different attributes. Every way you looked at him. And God, God is in, he's in many forms. You can say that God is a spirit. And the spirit is like shining through this diamond. You set a, you set a, a, a diamond up, you shine a light in it, it'll, it'll reflect all different ways. And you don't know that when you have God in you, you've got the Holy Ghost, that our reflection, it 
what, what kind of reflection we want to give. We want to give a good reflection, or we want to give a bad reflection. I want to give a good reflection. I want to, I don't want to hide it. You know, a lot, just, a lot of people think that when they get when they get saved, that they've automatically already got all these things. That's right. But that's not true. That's right. These are things that we have to grow in, just like an apple tree, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. An apple tree can grow, but it don't have no fruit on it. It takes time for that fruit to bloom. And that's the way we are. It takes time for us to put these things on. You know, a lot, a lot of people think that they get it overnight or they've got all these things already when they're saved. They don't. They're trying to grow into them, trying to get back to that perfect image, which is what this was. That's right. Christ, and we're still trying to get there. That's exactly right. And I missed the skirt. Uh, Brother Johnny kind of touched it there. Let's back up here to James 5 and 7. I'm skipping. Be patient, therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and the latter rain. You're gonna, we're going to receive this as time goes. God's waiting on us. In other words, all these things we preach about, it, you know, even it's just like this, the qualifications for a deacon or for a bishop. All of them are called their goals that sets out there that people walk toward them. I, I want to be a better. I mean, I, I'm a lover of hospitality, but I think I could be better at that. I think I could be better. And I think that all of God's attributes that he tells us about, that we're, we're to press toward them. We're to press toward this fruit. And if we get it, the more we walk with God, the more the fruit of the Spirit will be in our lives. But the first, I'm going to start out here, just like I said, if we talk about charity. But in 1 Corinthians, you know what? You need to put 13 down there because I don't have it on there. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I've got the scripture. I just now noticed that. But it's talking about charity in the 13th chapter. We need to put these put things on. Charity is the bond of perfectness. It's all of these things. We're putting it on. It's like Brother Johnny said. You know, yeah, I have, I have a little bit of forgiveness and and I had a little bit of all of God when I first come in, but I've been building on it. I've been adding to it. How many's adding to what you got? Amen. 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 We'll get I get on to that down here later on in the lesson too. But in 1 Corinthians 13 and 4, he said, Charity suffereth long. We'll go on down here. You got love, you'll suffer long. And it's kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. We get puffed up. Yeah. That that fruit ain't from God. Right. That's fleshly. That's the old flesh. That's the old this old man. This old Adam nature that we got. This is what's got to die, and the new man's got to live in us. All right. It doeth not behave itself unseemly. Charity don't. Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. Charity, you know what, thinketh no evil. It don't mean the thoughts ain't going to come to their, your mind, but it's, you're not going to entertain them anymore. Rejoicing not in iniquity. Charity don't rejoice in iniquity. But rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, no matter what kinds. Believeth all things, hopeth all things, not like this last one. What? Endureth all things. If we do, if we do this, amen. You know, we talk about love being one of the fruit, one of the fruits of the spirit here. But just like I said, when who who showed the perfect love? Wasn't it Jesus Christ? Yeah. That he laid down his life for us. He said. He said, no greater love hath any man than a man to lay down his life for his friends. He laid down his life for his friends. Yeah. Even for us, we wasn't even known, but yet he came and he laid down his life. He, he gave, he, he, in other words, he gave of himself till he had nothing left to give. He gave his life, his thoughts, he gave his body, he gave everything. Just like us, when we start following the Lord, we'll not so much think about ourselves all the time, but we'll be able to give of ourselves to help someone else. 
But to have love, that's the fruit of the Spirit. People say God is love. He is love. And when we put God, he said, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh, that's putting on love. That's what love is. All these things that we go through, you'll, you'll find how or maybe a little, you might find a little bit of yourself in it. You know, sometimes you have to love people. You remember when Jesus was being crucified? <coughs> you remember what he said? He forgive said, them. forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Forgive how many of us can do that when people do things forgive to us and, and saying things about us and doing things to persecute us? How many of us can just say, Lord, help them? Help them not to be that way. I'll tell you what, our country has been in such a conflict over all the politics and all the stuff that's been on. It's, it's a shame, but the way it is. You know what? I see it in the government, and I see it in the, the, the parties. I see it in the Republicans and the Democrats and all that stuff. But you know what's worse is you see it in the churches. You see the same kind of atmosphere in the churches. Right. Everybody fighting against one yeah. another, warring against one another. But you know what? The bottom line is God is love. Amen. And we've got to love one another. Even if I don't like somebody, if I don't like their ways, I still got to love them. Yep. Amen. We've got to be forgiven to love people. And I'll tell you what, it's hard to overcome the nature. Everybody else wants to fight war. But if we're not careful, we can be kept, captured and taken in by that too. Amen. How about joy? I love to have joy. How many loves joy? <coughs> Amen. I love that joy, Brother Judd. In Psalm 16, 11, he said, Thou wilt show me the path of life, and in thy presence is the fullness of joy. But if we can get in the presence of the Lord, that's where the fullness of joy is at. I want that joy. Psalms 101, it said, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Joyful noise, joyful noise. Not a bunch of noise, but a joyful noise. You know, to the world, it might be it might be a bunch of noise. But really, if we know the Lord, it's a joy. And back at 3 and 18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. That's the only place there is joy. John 15, 11, I like this verse. <coughs> These things have I spoken to you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy <coughs> might be full. I want to be full of that, that joy, don't you? Mm -hmm. And that's why he wanted the joy of the Holy Ghost to be in us. He wanted his joy. How about peace? This is a good definition for peace. In harmony or wholeness, real peace is being in harmony with God in harmony with yourself and in harmony with your fellow man. This is real peace. And you can be at peace. And then I, I want to be at peace. I don't want to be a bunch of war and struggle. This whole world's full of struggle. But I want to have I want to have peace with the Lord. This definition of peace is like on to be guard, like in Philippians 4 and 7, he said, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. In other words, that peace will keep you. It will be it's like a guard. It guards against evil. If we have that peace. Like the peace, like an umpire. You know when an umpire says strike, that's what it is. And don't do you no good to turn around and argue with them. Somebody, if he says foul ball, that's a foul ball. And he used to argue with my brother, the umpire of right. Amen. Amen. Jesus is our umpire. When he says, that's what he means. As an umpire, Colossians 3 and 15, he says, And then let the peace of God, what? Rule, Rule in your hearts. To the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. In other words, God will rule in our hearts. If we have peace, it'll rule. It'll God will show us the peaceful way, the decisions that we make, and the things that we do. God will, will do it through peace. That's the fruit of the Spirit. That's what we need to press for the mark, for the high calling that's in Jesus Christ. How about long suffering? 
And I've got two definitions here of long suffering, but that don't mean that's all of it. There's a lot. There's a lot of long suffering. But it said two kinds of long suffering. How about this one? Patience with people who irritate and provoke us. Where you're going to work on the job place? I'll tell you what, the devil really works on you. He will. <laughs> Amen. When you got to put up with the public and people you work with and all these things, oh, it, this is a continuous battle. But you know what? You still got to let your light shine. You can't get mad and start throwing wrenches, cussing, carrying on. Get mad because people's watching. The devil, boy, he'd love, he'd love to put something in your way because he's stumbling. How about this one? Patience in the annoying circumstances of life. All the things that goes on. I used to, my car used to break down and run out of gas. Or I'd lock the keys in the car. Something was my fault. I'd bust the wind out. That was real smart, wasn't it? Yep. I don't do that anymore. Lord chastened me for that kind of stuff. I don't want to go back and do that kind of stuff. Hollering, screaming, all that stuff. And all them things are but they're right there on the tip of your tongue when you get aggravated or something. The old devil wants to jump right in there and get you to say something or do something. He will. But we need to have long suffering. We need to we need to wait on God. In 2 Corinthians 12 and 7, and least I should be exalted above measure. Now Apostle Paul, he sought the Lord. He had an affliction. And he sought the Lord about it. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, in other words, three times, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect and weak. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Every, little, every time you get something wrong, you know, if you if it don't move out of the way right now, you start doubting yourself and you start feeling bad, but sometimes things are there for your benefit. Apostle Paul was getting an abundance of revelations. God was feeding his mind. But God didn't want him to get both to lift it up in himself through the abundance of the revelation. So I don't know what the thorn was. It could have been false brethren. He speaks about that. It could have been affliction in his body. But whatever it was, three times he really he sought the Lord about it. He wanted deliverance, but the Lord told him, my grace is sufficient. In other words, you know, you're made strong through the, through the weakness. Thank God. So when you go through something, the Bible says the Lord ain't going to put nothing up on us that we can't bear. We can bear things. We can bear all things if we walk in the Lord. Amen. I'll tell you what. We read about Apostle Paul. He was beaten by many stripes, rods, put in jail. He was shipwrecked at sea. All these things. But God brought him through all of them. The apostles, what they've been through. Look at the brethren and the sisters of Older folks that's been before you that's held on and endured all the way down till their till their time. Thank God. And that's just like us. We're here working together, enduring together, trying to bring forth some fruit. In other words, we want to have God's garden here. We want to bring some forth some fruit. If we have fruit to eat, people's gonna to come to eat. Amen. Amen. How about gentleness? You want gentleness, being gentle. It's goodness in action. Gentleness or kindness is goodness in action. I've got a passage of scripture here. I'm not going to read it tonight. But it's in Jeremiah 38, 1 through 13. About a, about a eunuch, his name was Edomite. Edomite was, was a eunuch, an Ethiopian eunuch. And he was a he was a he was a one of the stewards of King Zedekiah's house. And uh, when Jeremiah told the people what God was going to do, he said he was going to come in and, and he was going to give the city over because of their wickedness. And the religious leaders of the day, they rose up against Jeremiah and they put him in prison. Well, first the King Zedekiah put him in prison. 
And it wasn't bad enough he was in the prison, but then the religious leaders, when they heard what he was saying, that he was telling them that, you know, y'all just need to surrender to the king of Babylon because God's going to give him the city. I mean, it's going to happen. And they, he got up, they were the religious leaders, they got mad, and they took old Jeremiah and said they, let, they didn't just let him down in the dungeon, but they put him down in the bottom of the dungeon, down in, and they said they wasn't even no water, so there was mar down there. Yeah. And so they let him right down in, but they didn't have no water to drink. He's already living on bread and water in the prison house. The king would give him one, give him a piece of bread every day and, and water, but now they could even put him down in a lower place. Just because he didn't go along with what they say. But this Edomelech, he was a eunuch. When he saw and he heard that Jeremiah had been put down in the dungeon, he went to the king. Now he was a eunuch. And he probably couldn't really be, wasn't even supposed to go into the king. But he went into the king and he, he petitioned the king. And he told him, he said, Jeremiah said he's down in the dungeon, down in the bottom, down in the mar. And if we don't get him out, he's going to die down there. He had compassion upon Jeremiah. He had gentleness. He had goodness. He, in his heart, he thought he didn't think about himself or him being a youth or a king, but he, he went anyway. And the king said, well, go get you 30 men and go down there and get a lift Jeremiah up out of the prison house. And it said that this youth went down there and they took rags. And I thought probably he was so weak and frail that probably would have tore him up. They tried to get him out of there. But they put rags down to where he could put them underneath his arms. And he could put a rope on them and they could get up. And I, I thought how they took them old rags and he made them gentle to where they wouldn't hurt him or tear him up, you know. And then they took a rope and brought him up out of the jailhouse. I'll tell you what, if we see somebody in trouble tonight, I'll tell you what, it's, it's a gentleness of God that we have compassion on people. That's just like this, this unit here. He had compassion on Jeremiah. Maybe if it hadn't been for him, Jeremiah might have died in there. But God had mercy upon him. He was in a terrible state, in a terrible place. But you know what? Jeremiah came out on top in the end. When they took them all captive, they left Jeremiah there. They, they said, you can go with us if you want to. He said, no, I'm going to stay here. So they left Jeremiah in the land to try to care for the ones that was left behind. But this is the gentleness and goodness, he said in Galatians here, goodness talking about Ephesians 9, said, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Goodness, how can you just, I mean, common sense can tell you what goodness is, huh? Just being good to people, not being hateful, being good to people, helping people, loving people, giving to people. If you see somebody in need, help them. Lifting somebody up. I tell you what, God is a great God. All these things are the fruit of the Spirit. And I know, I know we dress holy and, and we live holy and all these, these things are good. There's a lot of people, a lot of sisters wear long dresses, but man, their attitude or their character is sure ain't Christian life. Yeah. A lot of brothers might wear a suit and a tie and go to church every Sunday and pay their tithes, but their attitude, their character, mm -hmm. it's an it ain't Christ life. And all the things that we got, God's wanting the heart. If we get the heart, everything else is going to take care of itself. He says it's not what goes in the mouth of the foul of the man, but it's what comes out of the heart. Amen. That's what the foul of the man. You know, it's just like this. If, if you don't have to really preach on money, just preach the Lord and preach on the goodness of God. And God, God will take care of it. Amen. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. How about faith? <coughs> Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen, what Hebrews says 11 and 1. <coughs> Romans 10 and 17, so then faith. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hearing God's word, talking about God's word. That's what, that's what builds up our faith. Another place it says, building up our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. We spend time in prayer, spend time... Seeking the Lord. Our granddaughter, she's she don't understand all the things about church. But what she understands, she she practices. She's really trying her best to get a hold of it. And I'll tell you what, if 
You get people praying, no matter who they are. <coughs> you get people praying and talking to God. God can lead them out of the mess they're in. If somebody's a drug addict, you know, they might see somebody come in and be a drug addict. And you, but the thing about it is, you, if you get God, introduce them to the Lord, and you get them to pray. God's like I said, he that win a soul of his life. If you can get people to pray and then turn them toward God and trying to find God, God can turn them around. I don't care what kind of shape they're in. God is a miracle worker. And this fruit needs to be in the church. It needs to be in me and you so that we can share this fruit. And that's just like we ought to be a grocery store of God's goodness and his mercy. When people <coughs> come to the church, they ought to be able to taste of your fruit and know that you're good. If our fruit's from the Lord, it's going to be good. Sometimes our fruit's not right. You believe that? That's why he said, wait on your ministry. A lot of times we run to do something, but sometimes we pray about it a little bit. We might, maybe we're not right yet. Hebrews chapter 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is. You've got to believe that he is and that he is rewarder of them that diligently seek him. How many believe God is a rewarder? Amen. If we diligently seek after him, God is a rewarder. We've got to believe that. And we've got to preach that. We've got to talk about that. <coughs> We're serving a no God, not a maybe God. How about meekness? The Bible says Moses was the meekest man in all the earth. Mm -hmm. And all the things he put up with. I think it was it said ten times that he, they turned against Moses and Aaron and they murmured against him and wanted to stone him and everything. And every time that they didn't get their way, they blamed old Moses. Moses had to put up. Even Moses got one time to where he said, he, had, he questioned the Lord. He said, did I bear all of these people? In other words, if you have a child, you know, you're required to take care of your child, take care of your children. But here Moses had all these millions of people. He to figure out how he could do it. And then at one time, he was sent from the getting up, coming up in the morning. He'd go and sit before the people, and they'd come and ask him questions and ask him about judgment. He'd sit there till the evening, and he'd do that every day. And, and finally, his father-in-law, Jethro, come in and told him, said, you know, what you're doing is not wise. What you need to do is you need to get you some help. You need to have somebody that's ruler over thousands, over over hundreds, over fifties, over tens, and said, let them take care of the judgment. And said, then the harder things, they can bring it to you. Yeah. That's why God put a order, thank God, in, in the church and in the people. We gotta have, have God's got a place for everybody to work. Yeah. And if it's if it's set up the way God set it up, it's going it'll work right. Mm -hmm. But we gotta have all this fruit in there. 1 Corinthians 4 and 21. He said, What will ye? Shall I come unto you with the rod or in love and in the spirit of meekness? He was talking about chastening. Galatians 6 and 1 said, Brother, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of Everybody, in meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. You know, if you're not careful, if you do things in a wrong way, it'll come back to you. Mm -hmm. That's why God wants us to have a meek spirit. Do things in meekness. In other words, Brother Bill, if I, if I saw something in you, if you stumbled, if I'd come to you in a ruly or rash way, I might not, I might not get no result. I might not be able to you. Bigger than one another. We wouldn't, I wasn't thinking of that, but I'm just saying that's what happens when you go and rashly get on. You know, even your kids, you can do that. You can jump on your kids real quick, and you know what? They're going to jump back at you. But if you can have a meek spirit and try to do things in a meek way, then God, He'll help you. And it's hard sometimes to be meek and to be gentle and to have goodness and to have all these, thank God. All right, what about temperance? Oh, boy. That's the word. 
Proverbs 16, 32. He said, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Boy, it be slow to anger. You know, the Bible said be quick to hear and slow to speak. Slow to anger. All right, he said, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Now listen to this. He that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. If you can rule your spirit, that's what God wants you to do. That's what the Holy Ghost is for, is to come in and help you rule your spirit and your nature. Amen? Amen. Amen. I like this one right here. Yeah. It's like climbing the ladder. It's like what Brother Johnny was talking about there a while ago, about growing in the things of God. Let's grow, Brother Chris. Learning every day, the more you learn, the more you can grow. And it says this in 2 Peter chapter 1. We're going to start out in the fifth verse. And beside this, he said, giving all diligence. Definition, diligence, speed and haste. In other words, don't mess around. Don't be slothful. Don't loaf around. Get busy for God. Do what God wants you to do. He said, besides this, giving all diligence, Add to your faith what? Virtue. Virtue or moral excellence. In other words, you got faith, that's good. Well, if you got faith, we need to add some to it. What do we need to add to it? What do we need to add to faith? Virtue. Virtue. That's what it says right here, right? Moral excellence. In other words, our faith, we need to <coughs> learn and we need to pray so that we can grow in this. We can add to our faith virtue. In other words, moral excellence. Alright? Then after that, when you when you give virtue, add to your virtue what? Knowledge. knowledge. You know when you grow in faith, you grow in virtue, you know you get knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. You know, you can know a lot and not be able to control yourself. Don't do any good. Remember, he talked about the Israel, said they had a zeal that is not according to knowledge. We can know we can know a lot about something, but if we don't have no wisdom on how to how to, to apply knowledge, that's what they said. Definition of wisdom is to know how to apply knowledge. It takes God to teach us how to apply the knowledge. Add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge. Temperance. Control your spirit. And to temperance, what? Patience. Patience. It's like a ladder you're climbing up. You've got on that, and with all diligence, let's get on the ladder of faith here. Let's climb. He said, add to your faith virtue. And to virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. That's what we add to, add to patience. And to godliness, well, brotherly kindness. Well, that's putting on that charity. And to brotherly kindness, what? Charity. charity. One place he said that's the end of the commandment. In other words, that he said that's when we put away the old things and put on the new. They, he said, one place he said in here, 1 Corinthians 13, he said, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Though I sell all my goods and give them to the poor, <coughs> and he said, no, I don't have charity, it don't, it, it don't promise me anything. In other words, putting on charity, that's the main thing. Dr growing in God's grace, climbing this ladder, trying to, just like I said, Colossians 3 and 14, he said, charity is the bond of perfectness. In other words, he, he said, be ye holy as your heavenly Father. He's holy. How many believe God's holy tonight? Amen. Amen. We, we believe in holiness tonight. Amen. We got to be holy not just on the outside, but we got to be holy on the inside. Amen. All right, I'm going to read this again. And beside this, give all diligence, in other words, speed or haste, add to your faith, virtue, moral excellence, to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance. And the temperance, climbing the ladder, patience, and the patience, godliness, godliness, climbing the ladder, 
brotherly kindness, climbing the ladder. The brotherly kindness, charity, putting on these things of God. Just like Brother Johnny said, you just don't jump in and have it all. Some of, some of you, Sherry, might have more of one thing than I do another. And maybe Renee's got, she's got more of something else. But you know what? Growing in myself and us growing together, we can all put these things on together. That's what God wanted the church to come together for. And I like this part. For if, if, now this is the God's promises. He said, for if these things be in you, talk about these ladders of faith, steps of faith here, if they be in you and abound. How I many knows what abound means? Rule. Rule, to be in control. If they, in other words, they don't do no good to have these things if you don't let them, they don't control you. It don't do no good to have the Holy Ghost if you don't let it leave you. Amen? Amen. We gotta let God's rule in God's work rule us. Okay? He said, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren. You know what barren is? Empty. Empty? That's an empty womb. That's a barren womb. But I want something in me to grow, don't you? Neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If these things is in us and they rule, we're not going to be unfruitful. We're not going to be barren. We're going to have fruit. We're going to have life in us. This is what he said. But he that lacketh these things is what? Blind. Blind. And cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brother, give diligence, speed, haste, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. You ever read the scripture that says many are called? Mm -hmm. You're chosen. <clears throat> my, my, Sister Vicki, I want, I want my calling to be sure. I want God, if God's called me, I want, I want to be sure of that call. I want to be sure. He said make your calling sure. Make, in other words, get, make sure it's right. Make your calling sure <laughs> and election sure. You know what? When uh, people get elected, I use the president as an example. The president, well, this fall, there will be somebody running for president. Uh, Lord willing, and they have a vote and everything. Somebody's going to be elected to be president. Now, if we got somebody other than the ones in there, they would be called the president-elect. But they wouldn't be called the president until they took the office sometime in January. In other words, when we're called, we're called the children of God or the elect of God. But to really make it to the other side, to really receive the crown, we've got to be put in the office. You know what I'm saying? That's why he said many are called... But few are chosen. There's God deals with everybody. But the thing about it is people don't follow God. Listen to this. He said, Wherefore, the brethren, brother, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, everybody, you shall never fall. That's what I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't ever want to fall here. I don't ever want to fall. I want to keep on going. And that's what this is a ladder. I guess you could call this as a ladder of success, Brother Buck. If we climb up this ladder and we keep climbing and we do it lawfully and do it diligently, God is one of them. We're never going to fall. We'll be able to keep going. The Bible said, He that endure till the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. This chapter of Galatians, this fifth chapter of Galatians, it talks about the works of the flesh. It talks about your natural side. And then it talks about the fruit of the spirit. It talks about the spiritual side. It talks about the war that's going on between the natural and the spiritual. There's continual warfare going on. But we gotta win this. We gotta win this. You know, Jesus Christ, he I thought about joy when we saw about joy. You know, he saw the joy of what was gonna happen, and he endured the cross for the joy, for the joy that was gonna be on the other side. And I'll tell you what, if we can just get our eye on the prize tonight, get our eye on the crown, and all the things that's in front of us, they'll not hold us back. There's a lot of things people use to not go to church, to not pray, to not read. Yep. Everybody's got a lot of excuses why they can't do this. 
you know, but only God knows. I, I know when we used to have a fast service, and we had them every month. And it was good. But to a lot, it became a ritual. You just got some people that when they come when they wanted to. And you people, the church would be together, and people would be fasting and praying for their families or loved ones. And a lot of people would be at Walmart, Camden Park, and people, you know, wasn't serious. But this is a serious subject. Yeah. Making your calling and your election sure. I want to make it. How many Amen. wants to make it? Amen. 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 God's gift. Anybody got anything? Brother Johnny?